In Wales, people must now show a COVID pass, demonstrating their vaccination status or a recent negative test in order to enter nightclubs and attend large events. This all means that over 18s need to show a a COVID pass to enter nightclubs, uh, indoor non-seated events for more than 500 people, such as concerts or conventions, outdoor non-seated events for more than 4,000 people, and any setting or event with more than 10,000 people in attendance. Got all that? Well, to talk us through some of the implications for industries is Alan Miller of the Together Declaration. Alan, thank you for joining us on the show. This has been a relatively rapid implementation, has it not? There was a vote in the Senate last week and then suddenly this morning this has been implemented. Uh, Scotland took it a lot slower. Why has Wales moved so quickly in your view? Well, firstly, it should be noted that uh, it's actually outrageous that this has actually gone through because one of the uh, MPs uh, was trying to vote against it and due to a technical hitch on Zoom, uh, that was not acknowledged. So that's the first point. I think the second point is because that um, there are people who want to implement this, uh, this thing that is really unscientific, uh, and is really against the very fabric of our society and all the things we understand about freedom, our personal liberties. Um, you know, the the whole idea that um, you have to show your papers to get in and participate in society was never something that was presented uh, to us. We've had 18 months of sacrifices. We've lost over, you know, tens of thousands of jobs, over 15,000 venues across the UK. And now we're presented with a situation where people in Wales, younger people who, if we remind ourselves, are at a very, very low risk of COVID. You know, Chris Whitty was saying we should now be living with this like the flu. Uh, And yet now we're presented with a situation where you have to show me your papers. We know that in New York, where this has happened, which is a terrible tragedy, that up to 60% of revenue is lost uh, by some of the establishments in hospitality in Manhattan. And, you know, the whole idea of a vaccine passport as somehow some health benefit is nonsense. It's just completely wrong. You know, you can be vaccinated and still transmit. You can be unvaccinated and have high immunity. We should remind ourselves that we have almost 96% immunity in the UK, according to the uh, Office for National Statistics and PHE. And yet here we are in a situation where we are going to have a demand to show me your health papers, have digital health ID, and it's really unacceptable. And I would encourage everyone to sign the togetherdeclaration.org. Let your MPs know your uh, voice. And also in England, where we have the last day of the consultation today, to have your voices heard on that and let your MPs know. Because even though uh, in England we're being told that it's in reserve uh, and plan B only if things change, we know we've been told all sorts of things before. And this this is really another example of treating the public with contempt, with uh, not accepting the idea of conscience, with having a huge nudge to try and get some people, a small minority who are not vaccinated for whatever reason, rather than trying to win hearts and minds and convince them of the virtue or the merit of that, you know, in making these impositions, that means that they cannot engage uh, as a normal citizen in society. And as we've just seen in Italy, it may start in bars or restaurants or nightclubs and theatres, but, you know, very quickly that can become all workplaces. Like we've seen things like no jab, no job. We're seeing a constant suffocation and in series of impositions on the public. And quite frankly, the public square and ordinary people are being treated with disdain. Now, you say that, but if we step into the minds of people in government, do you see that they might be looking at all of these polls where there's overwhelming support from large majorities, although significant minorities uh, disagree with the policy? It does seem to be many, many polls show that the majority of people are in favour of uh, moves like this. And many people are still very afraid of the potential of COVID-19. Do you think that potentially some governments are looking at this and looking at uh, a frightened population, wanting a population to be confident to come back out into the pubs and the clubs and the theatres and really spice up the economy again? Could it not be argued that to some extent a policy like this would help give a worried population that boost to come out and, 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 and enjoy the world again? Well, there's two things about that. One thing is why is everyone so scared? And after a long period of spending hundreds of millions of pounds 
on campaigns with behavioural psychologists uh, at, within a, where they quite clearly have admitted now that the intention was to in, invoke fear, that it's understandable that some people may well still be scared. But the government, the leaders, the elected representatives have a duty to be honest. And if one is honest, the, re the level of risk now, particularly for people in this demographic, is very low. And we've had an extraordinary amount of people that have actually been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. The irony of this conversation about vaccine passports is you can still transmit it and get it even if you've been vaccinated, right? So what we need is honesty and transparency. To, n to now say, well, some people are scared because we've had so long of a, you know, a campaign of fear in many instances, um, is not a reason to justify something that's completely illogical and completely illiberal. And of course, there are always going to be people that think that, you know, the way to handle things is to be more authoritarian. But that's not how we are meant to be doing things in Britain, right? We, you know, it was Winston Churchill who got rid of the need for ID cards. Well, the British public never voted for it. And, you know, the thing about polling is this. Depending on how you ask the questions, will determine the kind of result you get. Now, if you look at the government's consultation, the DHSC consultation, it is one of the most one-sided and loaded set of questions that can be imagined. It's not one of those, right, just tell us what you think generally. It's a series of very particular questions that you can't even answer no to. You could, the only thing, if you're not sure, is you say, oh, I don't know. But So you have to actually specifically not answer that way and say, these are the reasons I'm against it. So, you know, polling, if it's, you know, is often done in, in a very one-sided way as well. It should be noted that in one poll, as it happens, that was a bit more open-ended, some readers were asked what they thought of uh, vaccine passports. And you would have imagined that about 80 or 90% of them were vaccinated and they thought it was OTT, mm. over the top. Mm. Because I although, think although, although, of course, reckon. sun readers would be a different sample from the entire population. And I do wonder, because I, I used to have this view that the British public would be much more liberty-loving than they seem to be. And I think that to some extent, the government itself was surprised by the amount of compliance there were with lockdown measures. One of the reasons why the lockdown wasn't brought in so soon is they thought that there'd be a sort of limited amount of time that people would abide by it. But it seemed that people were, as, as you were pointing out, more afraid than they realised they would be. To some extent, does the government not look at this as sort of the easy option, as the sort of chasing popularity option? Whenever Boris Johnson called a lockdown, it seemed his approval rating and indeed the Conservatives' poll rating would go up. The incentives here for government are pretty clear to see, aren't they? It all depends on whether you think that uh, an incentive for a government should be one where you do the best thing possible. And if they're going to be trusted in faith on wanting to do the best thing for Britain and for citizens, or if you try and do things that are just going to be popular based on the one hand that you spent hundreds of millions of pounds frightening the lives out of people, uh, and on the other hand, polling in a particular way and being obsessed by them. There's something mm -hmm. to do with principle here. Do we live in a free country? Do we value yeah. the gains of the Enlightenment around autonomy, bodily autonomy, around freedom of speech and independent thought around mm. the idea that, you know, we can move in a way that isn't constantly going to be checked by uh, some kind of security person demanding to know who we are and what we've done with the most intimate medical details of our lives. They are the questions that we need to address. And no, I don't, quite frankly, I don't think it's going to be something that's popular. And I, I you know, mm. at the moment, the togetherdeclaration.org has over 100,000 public signatories. We've only just begun. Uh, we have over uh, a 1,000 hospitality operators up and down the country that are saying it's completely outrageous. We should never have this. We should not have to ask uh, uh, our customers for their private details. No one wants to have to do that. And there's a last wave of people who are campaigning up and down the country, talking to their MPs, saying they don't want it. I think that, you know, the government should really not consider doing anything like this. They should stand yeah. down and actually... What we should see is that we should kick this into touch in Wales and Scotland as well. Well, thank you very much for your perspective. Alan Miller there.